Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. Once again, my special guest is my fiance, Mayumi Toyoda, who's in New York all of October to help me with my Halloween videos. And also because I really wanted you to experience a real Halloween. Thank you. <laughs> it's a crisp October night, and there's no better drink for a night like tonight than warm mulled cider. And today I'm going to be sharing my recipe with you for this perfect Halloween drink. Did Orville drink it all? No, he can't drink liquids. He'd melt on account of being a wicked witch. <laughs> <laughs> Always the charmer. <laughs> uh, no, the thing is that it's still simmering on the stove. Oh. And as soon as it's done, we're going to drink it. Hopefully you'll like it. I'm sure I will. And I'm going to share the recipe with all of you. So in the meanwhile, while we wait, why don't we take our friends to some of the last stores that we visited for our Halloween decor reviews. Mm -hmm. And we can start with TJ Maxx and their sister store, Marshalls. Take a look. We descended the escalator to find just two small tables of Halloween items for us to see, hear, and talk about. There were some of the usual suspects, like the troll dolls and the witch dolls that you're used to seeing at TJ Maxx, though Mayumi did find this crystal ball that was truly bewitching. Speaking of crystal balls, these were back from last year and they now offer it in silver. If you watched my Halloween hauls from last year, you know that I bought this item and had to paint it silver in my From Plastic to Pewter episode. It's times like this I wonder if these tours watch my show. And now it comes with a purple globe and creepy sound effects. What good fortune. TJ Maxx is very reliable for classic Halloween items like these. But I come here for the housewares. Unfortunately, this year there really weren't any kitchen towels that were wicked enough for the layer of Voltaire. Except maybe for this design. Last year I found an incredible table runner here. This year this one was my favorite. But as always, I'm on the hunt here for dishware. And unfortunately, the selection was very small this year, and all I found was this serving platter, appropriate for Hannibal Lecter's home. They also had creepy mugs. And speaking of creepy mugs, check out the creepy mug on this guy. I'm guessing the vampire sloth from last year just wasn't creepy enough? Next, we went downstairs to Sister Store Marshalls, where we found even less Halloween items. It seems like this year they've really scaled back their spooky items. They had some of the same things as upstairs, and it was nice to see a silver option for those skeletons. Next, we hit a Marshalls downtown where their Halloween section was basically a table under the escalator. They had some of the same items, but they also had this interesting Dr. Frankenstein's lightning elixir. That was quite novel. And I also liked this crow on this skull. They had glassware from years past, including these champagne flutes, although this year they came in black. So I decided to give those a whirl and I bought a set. I was also tempted by this dessert tower, though I noticed the only one on the floor was defective. And then I saw another one vastly more elegant and it wasn't even in the Halloween section. It really seems like they had less things than last year, didn't they? Yeah, but that's understandable. Yeah, I guess so. Those are the times we're in. I did love that crystal ball, though. Oh, that was a big improvement. From last year? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to paint it this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my crystal ball tells me that the warm mull cider is ready to serve. Mm. So let me move it to an appropriate bowl. Wow, that looks delicious. And it smells so good. It smells like potpourri you can drink. Yum. This drink is one of my favorite things about Halloween and I'm so happy I get to share it with you. Oh, thank you. And the bowl is so beautiful. I love that bowl. I got that bowl last year at Pottery Barn. You know, actually before I demonstrate how I make the cider, let's take a quick look at Pottery Barn's offerings for 2020 because they're really quite good. It's a quick one. Take a look. Pottery Barn is rarely on the forefront of the minds of Halloween enthusiasts. But for the third year in a row, I'm going to tell you to follow me down these stairs to the Halloween section where once again you'll find some of the year's most elegant Halloween items lurking in the shadows. Their Halloween section was quite small this year and making a comeback is their skeletal glass collection from years past. 
At some point or other, I've owned every one of these items. But new this year is this skeleton hand carafe, sure to help you, you know, get a handle on your drinking. There's also this skeleton hand punch bowl, but I was a bit bothered by the fact that the most interesting part is underneath where it's hard to see. I had a similar complaint about this cake stand. It looks absolutely fantastic from below. But unfortunately, once you put the frosted glass on top of it, it obscures most of the lovely sculpture. They also had this wonderful tombstone-shaped food serving platter. And this skeletal bar tool holder was absolutely to die for. I removed all of the cocktail making accessories, and let me tell you that the sculpture is nothing short of spooktacular. But my favorite item was the skeleton hand condiment server. It comes with these glass bowls that are removable, and the sculpture itself is made of metal and looks like three skeleton hands reaching up from the grave. Now, you can use this to keep your coins in, or obviously for condiments, or to serve snacks like nuts or candy corn. It could be used for a million different things, and that's why it's a must-have item and why it's coming back with me to the Lair of Voltaire. Once again, Pottery Barn scores big for their Halloween offerings. Uh, you know, recently somebody left a very long comment on my YouTube saying that they were sick of all of the cheap plastic items oh. that all the stores are selling around Halloween. Well, let me tell you, you should check out Pottery Barn because it seems like everything they make is either made out of glass, metal, ceramics, or some combination of the three. Now you've already seen my Kraken Bowl from last year, and now you've seen their items for this year. Well, one of their new items is now one of my favorite items. It is presently holding my spices, and you're gonna finally get to see it in use now as I show you my warmed mulled cider recipe. Yay! <laughs> take, take a look. <laughs> Here is everything I use in making my Halloween warm mulled cider recipe. The main ingredient, of course, is apple cider, not apple juice, mind you. This is unfiltered apple cider. This one is made of 100% apples, and if you can get it organic, even better. I'm using half a gallon of cider for this recipe. This decanter, by the way, is another Pottery Barn item. I got this one in 2017 during my Pottery Barn Halloween haul that year, and it's still kicking around in the lair. Now, as far as our spices go, we're gonna use whole cloves, whole cardamom seeds, dried allspice berries, then down here we have some star anise, whole nutmeg, some brown sugar, and of course, cinnamon sticks. But first, we're gonna start with the whole cloves. I count out about 15 or 20 of them, and then I grab an orange and I start to stick them into the peel of the orange, like so. If you have little monsters helping you make your warm malt cider, this is a great job to give them. They can make little jack-o'-lantern faces on there, and this will keep them happy and busy for a while. Once you've got your orange nice and studded, you just drop it in the pot. Next, I take an apple and I cut it into slices. And then I use the remaining cloves to decorate the slices as well. Again, I'm using somewhere between 15 and 20 cloves, but then I love cloves. And when you're done with that, you just drop them into the pot. Now that's starting to look like something. Next, I count out about 13 allspice berries and drop those into the pot. If you can't find whole berries, you can absolutely use the powdered variety. And that's true of all of the spices here. Next up are the cardamom seeds. If you've ever eaten one of these accidentally while eating Indian food, you know it's an absolute explosion of flavor in your mouth. <laughs> Some people hate that. I love it. Now I drop in three or four cinnamon sticks. And it's on to the nutmeg. I couldn't find my microplane grater, so I'm just using what I have on hand. 
Like I said, you can use powdered spices for all of these, but grinding nutmeg really brings out the aroma. I needed about a quarter teaspoon of this. I obviously way overdid it, as usual. <laughs> and you just drop it in just like that. As for our brown sugar, I personally think the cider is sweet enough as it is, so I just put in one tablespoon to offset the spices. Lastly, I grab a couple of star anise, and I drop those in, and we are finished. Now the pot goes to the stove where it simmers for about 45 minutes, and then it's ready to transfer to a punch bowl. Now if you're a pirate like me, you're going to want to spike yours with some spiced rum, garnish the mugs with some cinnamon sticks, and now there's nothing left to do but to serve and enjoy. Well, this is it. I hope you like it. I'm sure I will. Mmm. It is delicious, my love. <laughs> really? You really like it? Oh, yes. I am so glad. Mm. It's, oh, it smells so good. Mm. It's wherever you left your manners, fool. Do you always fight like this? Non-stop. Oh my god, it's gonna be a long month. <laughs> <laughs> I love this drink so much. It's been mm. so long since I've made it. It really smells and mm. tastes like a Halloween party in a cup. Speaking of parties, we should take our friends to Party City with us. It's not a place I normally go for Halloween home decor, but we went this season and we had a little bit more fun than is actually reasonable. It was very funny. Take a look. We walked into Party City and were instantly met by the Bone Brigade. Then we walked over to the animatronics to see what was popping. I was really impressed by this tall, ghostly woman. She really had the moves. I believe you could just put her on the dance floor at a goth club and no one would know she wasn't alive. <laughs> Mayumi also had some fun with the animatronics, and I think she actually started to bond with some of the weird little critters in this toy box. Especially that creepy little girl in the middle. What is that me? Yeah, she does look like you. <laughs> Not all of her animatronic experiences were as friendly. <laughs> They did have some spooky home decor items, but really nothing that's up to snuff for year-round use in the lair of Voltaire. Then I saw these hidden screamers. I had no idea what they were, so I decided to try one. That was a mistake, and it did nothing for my misophonia. Marvel fans might get their tongues wagged against this item. And Party City is always reliable for Halloween lighting effects. Next, I saw this smoke machine shaped like a coffin, and I had to have it. So, I danced one all the way back to the cash register. And you know they don't work without fog juice, so Mayumi was bringing the juice. They have a creepy crawly section, and I love insects, but Mayumi is really scared of them. So, of course, I had to have some fun with that. I was super impressed by this giant centipede. Mayumi, not so much. But don't feel too badly for her. She got back at me. I've got my weaknesses too. We were having a bloody good time as they had slashed prices on these tasteful paper plates. I also wasn't the least bit bugged by this serving bowl. Now, Party City is a party store, so they're reliable for year-round things like black paper cups, black cutlery, black plates, and black napkins, which get a lot of use at the Lair of Voltaire. But my favorite section is the chalkboard menu card section. Small pieces of black paper that you can write on with silver marker. They're extremely handy for your Halloween party, and I get a lot of use of them at the merch table at my concerts. Mm. <laughs> 
Party City doesn't normally have the kind of home decor that I would use to decorate the lair year round, but we did have a lot of fun at that store. Yeah, we did. And it is after all a party supply store and we bought a lot of party supplies for our upcoming Halloween party themed videos. Oh, baking videos. Baking videos and Halloween cocktail videos. So we really hope you're gonna stick around at least till the end of October. Remember where we found a lot of baking supplies this year? Uh, Joanne's? Joanne's. Oh yeah. Bought so many cupcake decorating things there <laughs> this year. <laughs> they also had a very peculiar Halloween theme this year. Yeah. Take a look. We walked into Joanne's in Paramus, New Jersey, and were transported to a Halloween in the 1930s. A Halloween where things were decidedly dark and very much Art Deco. You could imagine these items in the home of the Great Gatsby, presuming the Great Gatsby had suddenly become a member of the Adams family. The color scheme was primarily black and gold, and there were many snake-themed items. Snakes and creepy crawlies. I wondered if it had something to do with the fascination with ancient Egypt that was certainly something happening at that time. A lot of these items made me feel like I was at a Halloween party for some crazy eccentric who lived in the Chrysler building in the 30s. But some of the standout items were the vessels, like these beautiful bottles, and these bottles with the removable lids and a small hanging bat were by far my favorite item in the line. While the color scheme was primarily black and gold, there also were a lot of blue items as well. It didn't seem very Halloween to me, but I know that it's going to work for a lot of you at home. While a deco Halloween is certainly a very interesting concept, I prefer my Halloween a little bit more traditionally gothic, and there were certainly plenty of those items on display as well. On the top shelf there were birds of prey, and on the bottom shelf a melancholy skeleton thinking, how can I soar like a bird of prey when I'm surrounded by chickens? There were plenty of beautiful ceramic items like this serving bowl, and there was no shortage of cauldron choices this year. Some of my top picks include this one, which will really make your Halloween party soar. Speaking of soaring, this one had beautiful little bat wings on it, but it was my spirit that soared when I saw Halloween-themed Christmas tree decorations. Now these are gonna come in handy in December. As usual, I bought some spooky ribbon while I was there, but it was ironically in this section where I spent most of my time and money. I bought a lot of spooky cupcake decorating things like these baking cups, and more baking cups, and yet more baking cups. I also bought these black icing kitty cats, and Halloween sprinkles, and more Halloween sprinkles. And I also bought these silicone molds for making candy tombstones, which I really think will come in handy. All in all, I spent a lot of time in that section. Seems like there's going to be a lot of Halloween baking coming up. Well, that was our trip to Joann's. You bought a ton of fabric. There. Yes, I did. What are you going to make? Clothing. Well, I didn't think you were going to make a circus tent. I'm going to make a brand. A brand? Yeah. That's amazing. You also seem to really like the Art Deco Halloween line. Yes. I found the bottles very beautiful. The, be the bottles were beautiful, yeah. Uh, I love Art Deco and I love Halloween, but Art Deco Halloween didn't really speak to me. But luckily there were things that I really did love at Joann's. I loved that I could get Halloween themed Christmas tree decorations. Yeah. Because I am totally putting up a tree this year. Nice. You should come up all of December and spend spooky Christmas with me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't puke, I just dusted. Well, spooky Christmas is a long way off. For the time being, we are here to celebrate Halloween with you all month long, right here on Gothic Homemaker. <laughs>